Mm. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. So money, money to be made, man, for sure. Money to be made. What's going on, people? Constant approach. Uh, we are live Saturday, January 22nd. Shouts out to everybody who's watching this video. Thanks for supporting the channel. My name is JV Wins here once again with Dogon SS. Um, NFL divisional uh, round playoff this weekend. I'm very excited. I'm just hoping Aaron Rodgers doesn't break my heart again because I keep rooting for the guy, but he just has this thing for losing um, <laughs> in the <laughs> NFC Championship. You know, I'm just tired. This might be the last year where I hold out hope. Like, bro, you need to stop losing in this game because I think you're the best, but you keep losing. Mm -hmm. So it's just not looking good for you. But that's neither here nor there, man. I'm just excited to watch these games. I think the Titans and the uh, Bengals are playing right now. So, um, but nevertheless, we back live again. JB wins Dogon SS. Um, gonna have a good live stream this week, man. I think we got a couple of interesting things to talk about. Uh, first up, this came this this situation came across my uh, radar earlier this week. I want to say it was. Tuesday evening, you know, you get the little, I got the iPhone, so they give you like the little Apple news alerts. And I saw this and I and I, I I was aware that it was something that was happening, but I didn't know that it had gotten to this point. So uh, to anybody who doesn't know, uh, there's this educational discipline that's not actually brand new. It's been around for a while called critical race theory. Um, but in light of the recent reconciliation apparently that america is trying to make with its racist history um it has resurfaced um in an aggressive way uh, a lot of uh schools like the school systems and there are curriculums that are trying to incorporate critical race theory into the normal course curriculum to sort of do a better job of educating kids on America's racist history. Uh, but there's been some blowback from people who believe that it attempts to make white people feel inherently responsible for racism. Uh, despite the fact that you, you could be 18, 19 years old and you don't really have a context for historical racism. You just live your life like everybody else. But some people believe that, you know, critical race theory attempts to blame that kind of person and say, hey, racism is your fault because you're a white person and you're inherently racist. So as a result of this pushback on critical race theory, uh, there are people in politics who are trying to create a bill that attempts to ban it from being taught in schools and make it essentially illegal to the point where if someone feels as though they are being taught something that is in any way close to being critical race theory that they have the grounds to sue on the grounds of discrimination saying that you know uh criti teaching critical race theory is discriminatory um so i think that this is interesting because it provides us with an opportunity in my opinion to talk about why it can be difficult at times especially in this day and age to broach an understanding when it comes to like historical systemic racism why it can be hard to for everybody who wants to be involved in that conversation to reach an understanding so i'm gonna read a little bit from this story from ap real quick that gets basically into where this situation currently currently stands so it says a bill pushed by republican florida governor ron DeSantis that would prohibit public schools and private businesses from making white people feel quote unquote discomfort when they teach students or train employees about discrimination in the nation's past received its first approval Tuesday. The Senate Education Committee approved the bill that takes aim at critical race theory, though it doesn't mention it explicitly on party lines with Republicans in favor and Democrats opposed. So Republicans want the bill that bans it and Democrats don't want the bill that will ban it. Dem Democrats argue the bill isn't needed, would lead to frivolous lawsuits, and said it would amount to censorship in schools. They asked without success for real life examples of teachers or businesses telling students or employees that they are racist because of their race. Quote, the bill's not for blacks. This bill was not for any other race. This was directed to make whites not feel bad about what happened years ago. End quote. Said state, said state Senator Sherman Jones, who was black, 
quote, at no point did anyone say white people should be held responsible for what happened. But what I would ask my white counterparts is, are you an enabler of what happened or are you going to say we must talk about history, end quote. Um, conservatives reject it, saying it is a worldview derived from Marxism that divides society by defining people as oppressors and oppressed based on their race. They call it an attempt to rewrite American history and make white people believe they are inherently racist. So that is the story that AP wrote on what's going on with the bill. So here's the thing about this from my standpoint. Um, this is one of the main reasons why it's so hard to talk about race nowadays, because you have what I call bad faith actors on both sides. And so what I mean by this is this, the, the attempt to ban critical race theory, in my estimation, is a response to bad faith actors on the other side of this conversation. Um, now, I'm not saying that this is most people, but I'm saying that there is an element of people who are in favor of critical race theory and things like that. There is a small element within that faction of people who do go out of their way to suggest that white people are inherently racist just because they're white. Um, I think that that's problematic. Um, but again, to be clear, I do think that that is a minority. That's not a majority. Most people are reasonable. Most people say, hey, you're not inherently a bad person or racist or an oppressor just because you're white, but we need to find a constructive way to talk about America within a historical context because racism is, whether you like it or not, baked into the bread of the history of America as a nation. And so it has to be talked about because proper understanding of it can help solve a lot of current social and cultural issues. But unfortunately, you have a lot of bad faith actors. And I've seen this play out in person, as well as on the Internet, where you have people who are so bitter and resentful towards the historical past of racism that they posit in certain respects, whether overtly or subvertly, that all bad, that all white people are the bad guy and that all white people, no matter what your situation is, are the problem, because if you're white, you are an oppressor by default and you are inherently racist and being able to benefit from institutional and systemic racism. In my opinion, I feel like that's an issue. That's a problem. But there are also, let's be clear, bad faith actors on the other side. And so I think bad faith actors are on both sides are what's contributing to this mess. On the other side, you have people who are bad faith actors who say racism isn't real. It's not really a thing. You guys are blowing smoke. Um, this is 2022. We can't be talking about racism no more because everybody has an equal and fair chance to succeed regardless of your race and regardless of your socioeconomic situation. Those are bad faith actors on the other side because you're being you're, you're disingenuously trying to disregard the impact that institutional racism has had on certain cultures and subcultures and subgroups in this country. You can't just brush that aside and act like it doesn't exist. It's a real thing. So I feel like what you're seeing is both sides of this conversation reacting to bad faith actors, bad faith actors that are on the anti-critical race theory side who want to act like racism doesn't exist and everybody has a fair shot and that that was ancient history the 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 the, the, ramp, the, the manifestation and the ramifications of racism no longer apply stop crying get out there and work hard and you'll succeed it doesn't matter what your race is and then you have people on the other side who are responding to that by saying well damn all y'all are the problem because y'all don't want to talk about this so you must be inherently racist just because you're white or just because you have an issue with critical race theory. You know, this gives us the opportunity to address the fact that whether we're talking about race or any other issue, in this instance, it happens to be race and, you know, historical, systemic, institutional, whatever word you want to use to describe longstanding issues with respect to racism. It gives us the chance to once again understand that bad faith acting is bad when it comes to the converse, when it comes to discussion of anything and trying to promote understanding. So it does no one any good in this conversation to believe that racism doesn't exist, 
and that everyone has an equal chance to succeed and thus we don't need to be talking about it because it's not really a thing nor does it do anybody any good to say hey all white people are the devil all white people are oppressors all white people are inherently racist all white people are the problem so you know i disagree with this bill fundamentally because i agree with Sheriff jones most reasonable people are trying to make white people feel uncomfortable because of racism but at the same time it's a necessary measure because you have to talk about it it's a it is a real part of why things have been and continue to be the way they are when it comes to dissecting economics socioeconomics opportunity and all of these things that are still going on today that are inequitable um so i don't like the bill but i also would be remiss if I was not being fair enough to say that there are a good amount of bad faith actors who do kind of want to make white people feel guilty because of their whiteness. And so I don't think either one is right. And I think both these sides are causing the problem. And it's what manifests itself in bills like this that attempt to basically censor education, which no one should be in favor of. But that's pretty much where we find ourselves today because all everyone wants to do is shout and respond to the bad faith acting instead of responding to the majority, which is, I believe, to be reasonable people. I I, I agree with that. Um, I think the whole thing is uh, with this stuff. I mean, there's so many angles to this stuff. Um, so many angles. But I'll just say that, um, yeah, I don't I don't see anything wrong with them teaching what actually happened in world history and United States history. If it happened, people should know about it. Yeah. And um, everybody at this point should know, especially if they're of an adult age, is that knowing your own personal history um, helps you figure out why you're doing certain things in your life. If people go to a psychologist, for instance, the psychologist is going to ask you a lot of stuff about your past. They're not asking you stuff about your past to, you know, get weird on you or nothing like that. They want to understand your history in order to see where you're at presently. And so we can try to correct certain things in the future. For So because you're at my doctor's office for a reason. Yeah. But you want to correct your behavior. So in order to correct your behavior, I'm going to need to know your past in order to rectify whatever you have going on. So uh, if America just sweeps stuff under the rug, then America won't grow and then it won't have a bright future because it wouldn't know exactly where it came from. So them trying to sweep stuff under the rug or put a certain type of dressing on it to make it seem uh, lighter than what actually happened would be a disservice to future generations. Yeah. So um, I'm, a, I'm a fan and an advocate of history and uh, I feel like history should be told just so people can, you know, know where they're going. So from that angle, uh, I would like the history to be told the way that it should be told. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the whole angle that they got at from the conservatives, where it could be a potential, potentially uh, Marxist agenda and all of these other things, one thing that we have to understand about is what people there's there's two types of conservatives and there's people who are conservatives because they don't want the government in their business and then there's people who run around with the cloak of conservatism all right just so they can maintain whatever status quo that was in the past mm -hmm. and so um for them to throw out a marxist thing out there is a dog whistle to me to other quote unquote conservatives to rally the troops to rally the troops yeah to, to say that hey uh we're under attack guys yeah, yeah. america's under attack by the yeah. marxists yeah yeah and so um just more dog whistle talk um and who is who's doing these dog whistles and so that's the people that you know need to be questioned mm -hmm. When there's, there's, I call them everyday white people, everyday white people, everyday white people, for the most part, aren't, re aren't racist. They're just, they want to make money. They want to go home and that's it. They want to be left alone. Yeah. And they they just want to chill. 
Mm-hmm. They want to chill by themselves with their own people. Now, hold, now, hang on a second. Now, everywhere in every culture of people that I know, everybody has their own affinity bias where they like hanging out with people that look like them. I don't mm-hmm. think that's a crime either. Right. And so if, if there are a group of people who want to be, hey, I want to live with, I'm white. I want to live with white people. What is that? Should I be a crime? No, you shouldn't feel guilty for that. And so the people that make you feel guilty for having a, you know, whatever type of thing, you know, those people need to go somewhere, you yeah. know, but if you, if, if you're not, if you're not actively uh, trying to oppress, actively trying to hurt people, like most white people aren't, mm-hmm. they're just chilling. Then those people aren't, should not be made to feel guilty about stuff that happened before they were born. And so there was a large part of my life where, yeah, the rhetoric was the, hey man, that it was just, you know, the oppressor, the oppressor, the oppressor, the oppressor, and they they all look like this, they all look like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as I got older and I met people and whatever, whatever, and it's just like, look, man, from what I see, there's a lot of good people in the world. Are there ignorant people? Yeah. 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 Are there ignorant people? Yeah. Do people take their own personal infinity bias and off that infinity bias, they exclude certain people because they don't look like them? I don't necessarily think that's racist either. If they're just doing whatever. Yeah, it is. Everyone has inherent biases. That's human nature. That doesn't mean anyone racist or not racist. And so when people are just being people, it's not coming from this place of hate. Mm -hmm. It's coming from a place of I'm looking out for the people that look like me. Mm -hmm. What's the crime in that? The only people that's hollering that that's racist are the people that don't look out for themselves. Yeah. And so our people have a tendency and have had a tendency of loving everybody else except themselves. Mm -hmm. And so they get mad when the world don't love everybody else like they do. Hey, guys, newsflash. The world looks out for themselves. Everybody looks out for themselves. And so I say all that to say is that everybody's quick to holler racism. Everybody's quick to holler this, holler, holler that. The people that that don't want this stuff to be taught, I don't think that those people are necessarily racist. I think these people are just, they just don't want, they're tired of hearing the story, honestly. Yeah. And a lot of, most all of the people weren't directly involved in any of it. And so they're just tired of hearing, look, hey man, that wasn't me. And so, and we see, I get both sides of it, honestly. Yeah. But the thing is, like you said, censoring education is not the answer either. Yeah, it's definitely not. So the story needs to be told how it needs to be told. And on top of that, there needs to be a layer of of, um, open dialogue, if you will, to like, hey, that was the past. How can we move forward type of stuff versus boogie boogie man, monster goblin devil guys. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the rhetoric, where they're all just ah, slack jaw, ready to you know whip somebody, then that's that wasn't what was going on either. Mm-hmm. So there's a there's a there's a very there's a lot of moving dynamics to this. But me personally, I'm a fan of history. Uh, the more history, because uh, I just like history stuff, man. And I learn something new all the time. And whenever I'm learning, it's like, oh wow. So yeah. this is why the yeah. people over here do that. Mm-hmm. I got into stuff in South America. I was getting into South American history and why certain areas in South America are the way that they are due to certain civil conflicts or this and this and that and the third. And it's like, oh, wow. Like that's no wonder they're living like that in this Venezuela or, or, right. or El Salvador or something like that. Right. And so just looking up certain things and it's just like th- these things have happened in third world countries or whatever, whatever. So it's just like looking at world history and things like that it helps it helps people grow and honestly if we're here to be better than our fathers type of situation then we need to know what our fathers did yeah, yeah. in or, in order to make sure that mistakes like that don't happen in the future so i'm all in favor for 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 people learning about this stuff yeah yeah it's just, you know the, when you say like you know most white people just want to go to work you know, go home and all that kind of stuff. I agree with that. Like in my, in my experience, 
most of these people are reasonable people who just want to live life and succeed, which is what everyone wants to do, live exactly. life and succeed. Exactly. Um, but, you know, I believe in the notion of the vocal minority. Yeah. And what ends up happening is even though the majority of people want to live their life and succeed and, you know, be left alone, as you say, which I also agree with, it gets it gets complicated because what happens is the majority of those people are doing those things. And since they're doing those things, they're not spending inordinate amounts of time on their soapbox on social media, screaming about their screaming out their self-righteous opinions. That's true. So what happens is you get the minority, the, the fringes, the people who are the bad faith actors, they're the ones who are so triggered by any and everything that they immediately jump to the internet to flood comments and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook with their dumb self-righteous opinions that are rooted in nothing factual. And so when you get that groundswell of loudness from the internet, it creates the perception that your side might be under attack, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, that's what feel like, you know, when you brought up that whole dog whistle thing, that's where that comes from. Most reasonable people ain't spending three hours on social media all day. Like they got li li they got lives to live. They going on vacations. They're going to work. They're taking their kids to basketball practice and soccer practice. They're cooking dinner. You know what I'm saying? They're doing laundry. They're going out to have a drink or two. They're going on vacations. Normal people living normal life. And, 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 and when you live a normal life like that, and that's not normal in a negative connotation, it's normal within a positive connotation, you don't have the time to go and find your dog whistle to blow it so you can, you know, ring the alarm. Uh, but 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 the bad faith actors, they got plenty of time for all of that because that's all they live for. Mm -hmm. All they live for is to be angry and triggered and mm -hmm. to scream and run their mouth on the internet and social media. Mm -hmm. So you get these bad faith actors who say racism isn't really real. What's the issue? Get rid of critical race theory. They're on the internet screaming that nonsense. And then you got people on the other side saying all white people are the devil. They're triggered it's the same way. They're responding to it. Now they're on the internet screaming that nonsense. And so all of that noise causes this groundswell of fear and apprehensiveness. And that fear and apprehensiveness is what makes people, by the result of that, maybe uncomfortable even talking about this stuff in the first place. So I agree with like, I feel like what, what we need to do a better job of is ignoring these dog whistlers. But I just don't see how that's possible when the world now runs on social media the way that it does. Like the world is so intertwined with these various platforms and, mess and, 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 and tools for message dissemination that it's hard to quiet the noise, even though that noise only represents, generally speaking, a minority of the population. Because I most know. of the population is reasonable. They're just not bothering with doing all of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, I hear what you're saying. It's just that vocal minority strikes again. And it's like whether we're talking about whether we're talking about race, whether we're talking about, you know, relationships, whether we're talking about economics, money, we could be talking about sports. Like mm -hmm. that loudness is what a lot of these shouting matches and conversations come from. That bill is a response to loudness from the vocal minority. And people who are on the other side who want to say critical race theory is tantamount to teaching white people that they're inherently racist, they're also being loud on the other side, screaming into the wind. And so, like, you know, it's too bad that we can't learn how to dial the noise down. Um, and, you know, this is one of those dynamics in modern society that I don't have a solution for. Um, I can point out the observation, but I don't have an answer because I don't think it's fixed. Like, I don't think that you can stop people or the world or society from being so, you know, intertwined with these things, from stopping people from getting on their bully pulpits and just, you know, screaming their nonsense and their self-righteous rhetoric all the time. You can't well, stop that. That's the way the world is. Well, the thing is, people are constantly being gaslit. And then once, they, once they're once they growing up in this country where either on the news, somewhere else, social media maybe, where they're constantly just... Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's yeah. racist. It's you constant go, oh, triggering. Yeah, it's all triggering all the time. You go, oh, that was racist. That's <laughs> racist. Look 
of these people. And then you go, ah, ah, ah. And then so then you just grow up thinking that everything is racist. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> Maybe that guy was really good enough to get the job. Maybe this guy really wasn't good enough. Yeah. Did we ever think about that? Oh, it's because the color of his skin is good. That used to be a thing all the time. When there was a thing like that all the time, times have changed. Some guys are getting positions. And so it's a thing where, yeah, man, well, but when th- that's, like you said, the minority are constantly pumping the stuff. And yeah. it's just constantly in the fabric of everybody that's, yeah, racist. You yeah. can't even watch a TV program. Yeah. To watch, like, I, I don't watch TV. My girl watches TV, but I watch TV vicariously through her. Right, and right. when she's watching, yeah, so when she's watching a, a TV show, a new show, or whatever, and there's black people on there, here we go. They're gonna yeah. have the episode where they get pulled over by the cops. Yeah, they're gonna have yeah. the police brutality episode. They're yeah. gonna have the episode. With, this is why are we having these episodes. <laughs> why are we having these episodes? Where's our in deep space uh, stuff? Yeah. Why aren't we in deep space and doing this and you know yeah. just having regular stuff? Why are we at a cookout? And why are we having um, being shot at the police as our as our stuff? Mm-hmm. And so it's a thing where when we're looking at stuff growing up, and we just it's just a part of us, you know. I think the last time I said something about Negro spirituals, why we gotta be singing like what yeah. are we singing slave songs for? Yeah. Well, we're supposed to be marching for people that that passed away because the cop killed them. But if if Tyrone did it from the Crips over here on whatever avenue, we're not gonna mm-hmm. say anything or yeah. march. Ain't nobody, mar- ain't nobody, ain't nobody marched for Buddy Shot Nipsey. No, you know, nobody, ain't nobody, nobody, anybody, no yeah, ain't nobody marched for, but yeah, yeah. No Negro spirituals there. Yeah. So why the, those, those TV show, those TV shows are the modern day Negro spiritual, absolutely. And they they yeah. pump this foolishness of yes. of innocent black man in America just getting done wrong by racism. Yeah, it's like, look, bro, <laughs> it, are people? So here's here's my thing. So yeah. are there ignorant people? And not even so. There's ignorant people that aren't racist, if that makes sense. Absolutely, it does. And so, and yeah. so, there's ignorant people based off how they were raised, based off the stereotypes they saw on TV, based off the stereotypes they hear on the songs from our songs that that are put on the thing. And so, when I walk in a parking lot after hitting my horn for getting on my car, you know, and my car looks better than theirs. They're honking their horn three times. Boom, 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 boom. Let me know that. Don't go- hop in my car, Negro. Boom, 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 boom. Don't hop in my car. <laughs> He's not being racist. He's ignorant. Mm-hmm. He thinks that every black man is going to hop in his car. Mm-hmm. But that's why he's boom, 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 boom. don't don't hop in my car, Negro. Mm-hmm. I don't have any wallet. I don't have any cash. I only have yeah. cars. I can cancel my yeah. car when you yeah. look. Bro, I'm not going to rob you. And so I could I could get offended by that. Sometimes I would. Other times, it was just like, look, bro, that's that guy. And does that make him a racist? No. He's from another culture, and he doesn't understand mine because everything about my culture that's on TV is not my culture. Exactly. And every and everything every everything that he's learned about Black people primarily has either been through hip-hop music or TV shows, entertainment bro, and all or, that. Or the, or the news, yeah. three gang members, blah, 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 blah. It's like, mm-hmm. we're not all that. Yeah. So my whole thing is, is, is like, I, so I get it. So I've, I've run into ignorant people that I know. I would say, most likely he's not a racist. I'm sure he doesn't have a Klan thing hanging up in his house. He's mm-hmm. not an active card member. He just mm-hmm. got conditioned the wrong way. Yeah. You remove stuff like that from schools, then that the conditioning is, is, is it's going to be the same foolishness. It's yeah. going to be this. You're actually going to make stuff worse. Yeah, you're going to just reinforce it. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that's more or less my stance on things, man, because, you know, I, I came from a, a, a space where, yeah, the rhetoric was that, hey, everybody's racist. Everybody's trying to get you. Me too. Uh, we, we came from the same. We come from the same foundation, man. It's, yeah. yeah. yeah whoa, it's whoa, boogie, same. boogie, boogie. They out to get yeah. you. And yeah. it's like, ah, ah, ah. And then so then you grow up and you go, no, nah, they're not out to get me. Actually, they're out there just trying to get theirs. Exactly. They're yeah. just trying to get theirs. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm, I'm like yeah, yeah. In, in life, there's winners and losers. I'm trying to win, and if I win, they lost. Um, and if they win, that means I lost. You know, the life is inherently unfair. I've said that thousands of times. 
I'm not even I'm not gonna get on my soapbox with that one because that's a whole nother angle. Mm-hmm. We're sort of we're obsessed like porn with this notion of fairness and that it doesn't exist. There's no real such thing right. as that. It doesn't exist. Right. Like the world is like human human civilization, I don't care where you are, is inherently inequitable. It's not exactly. fair. So yeah. you need like the we're not we don't focus on individuality enough and all of that stuff and it's all about what's fair and what's not fair and mind you what's fair and what's not fair within what based on what you perceive to be fairness exactly. because for you for you fairness is me winning but you don't realize that if you win someone else lost exactly. so they could perceive that to be unfair so the point is there's no such thing as fairness stop it with this fairness thing but, and, but that's a whole other aspect of this type of thing that you see is like people striving for this equitable treatment and fairness. It's like, look, man, focus on maximizing your potential and your output because no one can stop you from doing that. Like, I cannot in good faith put in less work than another individual who is not the same skin color as me. And then when that individual gets an opportunity, I say that it was racism. Now, if I put in the same amount of work as that person, I might be able to, I might, might have grounds to speculate at that point that there might be something ulterior going on. But if the work that we put in is inequitable and this person did the work to a higher level, you know what I'm saying? Like if this person did an elevated amount of work compared to me, if their work ethic was better, if they achieved it at a higher level, thus the position was attained, I can't in good faith when I know I didn't do what that person did say I missed out on that opportunity because it was because of my race. But we don't talk about that nuance. We just look at everything surface level and say black guy didn't get it. Black girl didn't get it. There's some racist stuff going on. And we got to be careful with that because when you wield the weapon, and I've said this before, when you wield, uh, when you weaponize racism in that way, you make other people who would otherwise be allies to you tone deaf because what they're doing is they're saying, well, if everything is racist and exactly. every time something happens, it's because of race, racism exactly. and it's racially motivated, there's nothing that can be done. So I'm just going to ignore you. So right. when they start ignoring you, when some real racist stuff goes down and you want them to listen, they're not going to listen. Exactly. So you just got to be careful with that kind of stuff. But like I said before, If I can say that, I can also say that when it comes to learning about racism, you have to be reasonable enough to understand that understanding history does not inherit, like the understanding of history isn't an attempt to demonize you because of your birthright. Mm -hmm. Um, It is just because it's important that history not be censored and these things happen. And so it's necessary for these things to be taught and spoken about. So the white noise on both sides just needs to kind of calm down. And just for me to close out, like when you brought up the whole dichotomy between ignorance and racism, you're 100 percent correct. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hang around people who like to go that route sometimes where something might happen that's optically unfavorable. And the first thing that that they'll want to point to is, oh, it must be racism. And it's like I get so tired of hearing that. And so what I always say to people is like, even if you think that there is an issue going on, like. You know, we're talking about two sides of, of this. We're talking about two sides of different coins here. All mm-hmm. racist people are ignorant, but not all ignorant people are racist. Exactly. Um, and so it's important that people understand that dynamic whenever they go into this situation with these glossy eyed ideals that they're constantly fighting against some sort of mystical oppressor. But, you know. That's, that was pretty much my stance on it, man. But I hear what you, I, I just don't, yeah, that stuff is kind of weird to me. Um, it's like maybe that individual is just ignorant. Like ignorant people aren't like inherently racist. Now you can say all racist people are ignorant. I'll give you that. Yeah. But yeah. all race, all ignorant people aren't racist. You know, it, it doesn't go both ways like that. Yeah, man. And honestly, bro, I, and I would hear I would hear certain things like that, similar to that. And then it just took me time, bro to really see it all the same because I was told to see it all in with the same lens and it's yeah. not. Yeah. And I already kind of felt like it was a difference, but as I got older, I really see the difference. And there's people out there that are extremists yeah. on both ends. Yeah. Right. And there are extremists who really believe in this stuff. Those people mm-hmm. are really the racist, the extremists, yeah. Yeah. but the extremists 
are outliers in comparison to the rest of people. Mm -hmm. The rest of people are just either are in some form of ignorant condition or whatever, whatever. And they really don't mean that. Mm -hmm. But then there's people that mean it. Mm -hmm. They go to the meetings. Yeah. They listen to those te those those radio programs. Yeah. They go to those weird websites. Like they really no, I'm a racist, proud yeah. of it. <laughs> and I hear it's not this and that. And yeah. so there are those people, but those are not the norm. That's not the average everyday person. Yeah. And so once we look at it as, no, those are the extremists and only ex the extremists are consciously aware of being racist. Those are the racists. And the every average everyday person that grew up through the same conditioning that we did. So we got the conditioning to be to, to call everything racist. They got the conditioning to do the things that we mm -hmm. ignorantly call racist. Mm -hmm. And so it's literally the same level of conditioning just mm -hmm. bombarded on two sides of the culture. When 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 black people listen to trap music, they actually internalize it because it's from their community mm -hmm. versus people who are outside of that community who just listen to it as a form of it. Oh, it's wild over there. What yeah. you guys do right there. But then <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah. then people who 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 look like that and resonate with the artists because they come from the same type of communities and all this other stuff like that, they're the ones that internalize it. So it's the same type of rhetoric that gets bombarded to us from the news, TV shows, movies, and stuff like that. So when 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 I'm receiving a certain mind control of, hey man, all y'all do is rob and kill. Mm -hmm. Same thing everybody else gets when they see, hey, all they do is rob and kill. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't this guy be any different? Hey guy, I'm just a good morning. Ah! <laughs> Good morning. Ah! <laughs> You're not like the rest of them. You see, yeah. you know, that's the yeah. that he doesn't. He's not being racist to me. He just told me that I'm a nice guy. Yeah. You're not like the rest of them. He doesn't know how to talk. He doesn't. He's yeah. not being racist. He's just ignorant on how to speak. Yeah. And so that once people get over that bridge, people won't be so quick to you're a racist. You're a racist. no, he don't know your culture, so yeah. he doesn't know why your hair is nappy. And then right. when you put heat on it, it's straight. Hey, wasn't your hair just the other? I mean, I mean, uh, I love your hair. He doesn't want to be racist, <laughs> but he likes my hair. You see what I'm saying? And so people need to stop doing that. It's not everybody. Everybody's not the boogeyman. There are a select group of people who are doing things intentionally, but it's not your next door neighbor, more or less. You yeah. know what I'm saying? More or less, it's not him. He's a cool guy. He's just ignorant as hell. Yeah, he's just yeah. ignorant. Yeah, yeah, so I agree, bro. Yeah, I mean, and it, and it gives you it gives you the opportunity to like you know explain the situation. You know, explain. Hey, man, I know what you meant, but check this out. You'd be you'd be surprised how receptive people are to that kind of stuff. Honestly, exactly. and I know because I've done it before. I've mm -hmm. done it because um, I you know us being black people, especially like when you you know when you become enlightened and you start learning more and going to college and all of that, and you're around mostly people who don't look like well in my case because you went to an HBCU, mm -hmm. but like you run into that kind of stuff a lot and you learn over it takes a while but you learn these people don't mean ill intent exactly. they literally come from homogenized cultural environments where they do not know any better so like i've gotten into situations where i've been like hey i know what you meant when you said that but here's how this might be interpreted if you say that around <laughs> someone else not me you know, so just be aware of something like that. Exactly. Um, and then they learn and then they figure out from learning how to not do that again or, exactly. or figure out a different way to do it. Like it happens mm -hmm. all the time. But mm -hmm. just this angst and this defensiveness about being on the lookout for the boogeyman and then on the other side, it's like, you know, all y'all do is cry about racism and the racism this and racism that and white supremacy this and all y'all. It's all the same white noise. And I, I just think it comes from an inundation of just loudness um and you know the media doesn't help they put this crap on news every day um they put the woe is me black person on tv every day every they day put the, they put the screaming white person who wants to say racism isn't real on tv every day every all day. of it is getting its fair shake on tv every day mm -hmm. um so i that's why i've stopped the, the only reason why i watch tv now is because of sports um well hell even espn will f throw yeah. race cards at you yeah they, yeah, they do it i'm like how are y'all making yeah. this race yeah Leave they this do alone. It. It, it, it that's what that's the thing is so it's being pushed to the forefront so aggressively mm -hmm. um and i don't think it's doing any good personally mm -hmm. uh but when you all of these messages is what's creating this sort of and people are just nervous and people are just nervous and frustrated and like just kind of anxious you know and 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 that's all they're responding to is those emotions and feelings 
and people want to do better. Most reasonable people, not the fringes, but people, reasonable people, it care, it, they care enough to want to live in a better world. I'll say that because um, I don't think even most reasonable people, like you said, like like we just said, they just want to live their lives and go about their business. They're not trying to be activists. Everyone's not trying to be an activist, right. uh, but they care enough at least to want to live in a world that's better. I'll say that. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of the bill, but I understand where I understand the place that it's coming from. So I think that was the overall point of wanting to talk about this particular topic. It's unfortunate, but that's the world we live in today. Um, so next up, we're going to talk about one of our favorite people who provides a wealth of content. Once again, the mm. lovely and fabulous Miss Brittany Renner. Um, I'm not going to, you know, Brittany Renner has made, has been more public facing. Uh, she's always been pretty popular, but I would say over the last year, she's sort of become super saiyan in terms of her, you know, level of popularity from the PJ Washington thing, the fallout from that. Now she's co-parenting with him. She's a single mom. So all of that kind of stuff. And everyone has something to say because they're using her as a linchpin, as an example of what's wrong with modern women. And she's sort of becoming an example for that in certain aspects of like the manosphere and like the social media world. Some of it earned, but some of it also, in my opinion, unfair, unfairly. Um, and, you know, so she makes her rounds and she goes on certain podcasts to say her piece. And I'll give her credit. She uh, you can't blow her out of her. You, you can't smoke her out of her hole. Um, and she does have some wits about her. So she's not the typical. She's not the typical, you know, uh, modern day attention seeking social media superstar female who isn't really high on the uh iq scale uh i'll say that she's uh she's pretty smart um and she has her opinions and she is forthright in them and she listens to constructive criticism but anything that she perceives to be ridiculous and unfair she just kind of claps back at it and so she makes her rounds on various platforms when she was when she appeared on kevin samuel's show that got a lot of uh, views and people talking. Um, she also appeared on DJ Academics podcast once. He was somebody who directly criticized her and much to her credit, she went to his platform to talk about it. And I can only respect that. Um, and then she also, uh, and now she's gone back to DJ Academics podcast, joined by the guys from the Fresh and Fit show, which is based out of uh, our hometown of Miami, Florida. Um, uh, because those guys have also used her as a content resource because their platform is trying to teach men how to effectively navigate modern women and modern dating and relationships. And so she was a source of content for them and their criticisms as well and all of that kind of stuff. So that's the abbreviated version of the history of that. But she appeared on DJ Academics podcast to kind of confront those guys, Myron and Fresh from the Fresh and Fit show. So we'll just give our reactions to her appearance on that podcast. What, what was we'll your main with. takeaway from from that? Maybe not that, that clip, but just the whole the whole thing in general. Um, I just I, mean, I, don't, <laughs> I don't mean I don't mean this as a knock to the guys at Fresh and Fit. I guess it just will be taken as a knock. So, but no offense. Yeah, there you go. No it offense. always fixes it when you say <laughs> That's what you say before you offend somebody. <laughs> right. no, no offense. Yeah, like with all they due just, respect. Yeah. yeah, with all due respect. They just did not hold their own when she was drilling them. Uh, listen, when you, 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 when you feel like, when you're fresh and fit, guys, you talk all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So... And you know you've been dunking on her the whole time. So she's here to low-key confront you. I don't know what you think you're here for, but this is more or less going to be a debate show on philosophies. Mm -hmm. She's going to be coming with her thought philosophy, and you're going to be coming from your manosphere red pill stuff. Mm -hmm. So you better come with your dissertation and your red pill stuff yeah. so you could you can put her, her argument to rest. She came with uh, – she was prepared to – and she came with her bullet points. And the only thing that – you know, Myron was doing was giggling. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's triggered. <laughs> I don't have a response to that. You know why he doesn't have a response to that? Because the only thing he talks about is the same talking points. 
he's reading from the same bullet points. Oh, yeah, women aren't special. Y'all just, 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 and then bring on the knucklehead women, like she said, Mm -hmm. to confirm his goofy ideologies. Now, his (laughs) ideologies, his ideologies make sense. They're rooted in truth, but he's reading, how can I see this? The hot, the, uh, the hot takes, the, he's basically reading the headlines, but not explaining what's going on in the subtle nuances of these. They they essentially do what is tantamount to going, like when you play the lottery, there's two ways to play the lottery. Mm -hmm. You can actually get a card and Mm -hmm. select each number you want to play, or you can do a quick pick. pick. Um, They essentially do the quick pick version of, of like, women and this yes. and modern women and all of that kind of stuff. Yes. Kevin Samuels is far more nuanced exactly. in my opinion exactly. than they are. Um, exactly. But they do essentially what is the quick pick version of that type of commentary. It's cookie cutter. Yeah. It's first dimension. It's no depth to it. So here comes a thought. Here comes a thought. Drilling these guys <laughs> and they don't have a response. You're supposed to be so red pilled out that you're supposed to put any woman in her place. Yeah. If you are red pilled enough, if you wake up and take a red pill every morning, whatever she was saying, you have a response to each and every one yeah, of them. You those. counter it every time. Yeah. Every yeah, there's a counter move. Everything, everything she does is it's like the Matrix T. It should be moving <laughs> in slow motion. You're just jujitsu in her hands away from me. But yet and still, he's sitting there letting the jabs get to him and giggling it off. Hey, bro, respond to this. He has nothing but more y'all ain't special. Hey, I'm talking to you about this. Why are you saying y'all ain't special? You know what I'm saying? And she's right. They're special enough that you want the, the cookies. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what are you talking about? So yeah. my whole thing is, I, I really feel as though they did it. They, they're still going to have their yuppies. And this is my thing. I think that their crowd base is more or less a younger audience who haven't done much in the field to to have their own opinion about what they're saying. So the stuff that they're saying is coming from a legitimate space where it has layers to it. And it's like, yep, that is true. No, they're not special in the capacity that you putting them on a pedestal would would actually um, take you out of your masculine frame, for instance. If you can elaborate on why you are saying these things and articulate why you're saying these things versus just giving hot bullet points, then I would think you're more about something. But the, the emails, I don't know, the whole scandal that came out with those guys before, where they're just using their right. platform just right. so they can get cake and right. get cookies. Right. And it's like, so you can't get cake and cookies on your own? You got to right. use your platform? To let the girls that's coming on the show get just so you can get the bad ones. So you can't pull up off your own game and off your own talking pieces to get a vagina. How could they? They're so aggressive. It's a lot of pullers out here, man. Huh? It's a lot of it's it's a lot of uh pull I use the word posers. There might be a better word than that, but there's just a lot of uh what's the word that the young kids use nowadays? Capping. Yeah, he's that's what yeah, there you go. He's he's, 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 He's got the cap. He's the, he got the blue cap on his head. <laughs> so, but, but, so for me, my my criticism. So, my criticism of red pill content in general. I I like it. I feel as though it is important and necessary for men to get on their square. I I, I came across some red pill content where I'm taking you know um, grains by grains of salt. And it's like. Yeah, that is true. I kind of thought that in the back of my head. I'm glad to hear the confirmation. You know what that actually does make, you know, that type of stuff. But if these guys were really philosophers and they really lived it, they would have a lot more to say than their same talking points is all. And so when she said, hey, I'm about this life. I live it. What about you? And he goes, ha, 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 giggle, giggle. I really don't get women your caliber period. If I did, they came on my show. So I don't even know how to talk to a woman like you. That's the faith that these guys have. I so agree. for so for so for the 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 fresh and fit fan base out there, 
I'm not I'm not getting at them like whatever, whatever. I'm just saying that these guys are trap rappers who never trapped. So then they're telling everybody how to cook a key and put it in a microwave. Yeah. And then so then once somebody comes out here that really lived from the lifestyle, talks to them, they really don't know the nuance of the lifestyle that these guys are talking about. So my whole thing, yeah, I feel like they pose. I feel like this was a grand opportunity to put a woman who has a philosophy like Brittany Renner in her place because that energy needs to be reined in a bit. And they had a golden opportunity on a big, big enough platform. They have a big platform too, but academics, he reaches the youth as well. Yeah. So this was a yeah. good opportunity to not let that energy win. And I really feel like her energy had a leg up on those guys uh, in that exchange. So that's more like my take on that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's interesting. You know, um, when I watching the, I've been watching those guys for like a year now. Mm -hmm. And I've always gotten this sense that before they had that podcast, they were their audience. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So before they got their podcast, they were the guys who they're talking to about mm -hmm. this is how you should handle this, do this. This is how you should navigate the world of women. They were the guys before the podcast who listen to podcasts like that to try and find answers. So they're not too far removed from their own audience, um, which is a unique situation. I'm not There aren't many content creators that I can say that about unless it's gamers. Like if you're a gamer or content creator, you're not not making, you're not not playing games. You're still playing games. So you're still connected to your audience in that regard. But a lot of these mad, a lot of these red pill, manosphere content creators, you would think that they were far enough removed away from their audience, hence why they have answers, because they've gone through the rigors. And so they know what to do, how to do it, and they know how to implement sound strategy. And so it's like, hey, bro, let me put you up on game so that you can know how to navigate this particular situation. But with those guys, again, I'll say what you said, no offense, no disrespect, disclaimer. <laughs> I feel as though they're not far removed from their own audience. And I do get the sense that in the regular population, I don't see guys like that getting a girl like Brittany Renner. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't see it. Now, here's the thing about this whole red pill situation. Mm -hmm. Red pill is become, the notion of red pill is becoming polluted, just like every other thing out here eventually gets polluted. When you get yep. all of these different people with their own individual interpretations, yep. And they get on there and they and they try to leverage a popular yep. I they, they try to leverage a popular ideal in order to sort of throw their own little yep. ideology in there and then they yep. code it as red pill. Yep. So here's the thing, and let me explain this to everybody out there who's confused by all of this. <laughs> this is what red pill means, okay? And I'm and I'm speaking. I'm not a woman, so as a man, I'm speaking from the standpoint of red pill within the context of a man. Red pill for a man means that you're not defined by a woman. So your individual, your individuality, your your goals, your priorities in life, the things that you want to achieve, your ideals, your values, your principles, those things are not ruled by the pursuit of women. They are ruled by things that you have identified based on what your goals and what you want to achieve, achieve in life are. So number one, you're not defined by a woman. Number two, you focus on maximizing yourself, self-improvement, self-improvement and not being defined by a woman. That's what red pill means, i.e. you're not a slave to vagina. So what not being ruled by a woman means, and I'm going to find I'm going to give a basic example. This is as basic example as I can think. If you have somebody, if you're a, if you're a guy with a red pill ideology, you're going to go get a job because you want to get a job so that you can save up money to start your business. You're going to go get a job so that you can make the rent. You're going to go get a job so that you can keep the lights on. You're going to go get a job so that you can start a savings account. 
you're going you're going to go get a job so that you can put some squirrel money away to maybe invest in in the stock market or 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 maybe open up an IRA at a bank or a credit union or something like that. That's your motivation for going out and earning money and contributing to society. Now, if you're not red pill, that means you're the type of guy who says I'm going to go get a job at this place cuz all the bad bitches work there. That is a uh, that is a blue pill guy. So that when you're ruled, when you're a slave to vagina, when you are ruled by the pursuit of women, you make decisions in life based upon how successful you perceive that decision to be with respect to getting women. That's a weak emotion. That's not red pill. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to earning money and things like that, you make those decisions based upon maximizing your personal output, learning a trade, going to college, get, your, get a degree getting an apprenticeship, an internship, and, and you earn money in order to be able to make a way for you to do those things. It's in any, it's it's not in any way based upon some sort of notion of this is going to put me in best position to get girls. That is all that red pill means. So all of this other stuff out here floating around the internet, floating around on YouTube, mind controlling to use your expression mind controlling you as to this is what red pill means you need to flush that stuff out of your system and like i'm gonna be fair when it comes to the, when it comes to fresh and fit they have on several occasions on their platform spoken to men about the importance of maximizing self-improvement and not being ruled by the pursuit of women so i'm going to give them credit they talked about that stuff but what they talk about more often than not is women are the problem. Women created this. Right. Here's how you deal with this as a man. Right. And that is that is not the right way to go about doing it. Like right. women it's are antagonistic. Over, yes, it is. And it, it's, it's adversarial. It's yes, like they're the yes. bad guy. And the thing about it is like <laughs> women give what you give them. <laughs> they take cues from the energy that you put into the world. Right, so if they see a situation to become opportunistic based upon your own personal weakness, they're going to take advantage of that. Right. That is not to blame them for all of the problems with modern dating and relationships. Really, it's your fault as a yes. man because <laughs> exactly. you don't maintain the values and the principles and the standards and the priorities necessary to not be victim to that kind of dynamic. Exactly. Bro. That's actually now now preaching that rhetoric is what red pill actually is, but we don't mm -hmm. see that anymore. What we see, we don't see that anymore. What we see it now is women created this because they're attention seekers. Women are the problem because they do this and they do that. Women are the problem because they're thoughts and they want to date this guy and date that guy and do all of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Listen, bro, you're listening to the wrong stuff. And, you know, with all due respect to those guys, because I still chime in and watch their videos from time to time, but over time I kind of fell back from it because I kept getting hit with that kind of messaging. Right. And, and and it does a man no good to consume that kind of information on a regular basis. But to your point, I think that in this weird old world that we're now coming up in with these Gen Zers and some millennials, some people from my generation too, this weird old world where everything is about impersonal forms of communication, everything is about uh, social media and Snapchat and TikTok and all of this other weird old stuff and OnlyFans and any other weird old thing that you can think of. These generations who are coming up and, and they have sort of gleaned this to be real life, the multiverse has become the real universe. They're speaking to that population of guys who have grown up with social atrophy and they don't know how to really seek and acquire women in an effective manner. And so it's like, well, what do I do? How do I solve this? I keep getting rejected. It can't be me. It must be them, right? Oh and you know, God, and fresh and fit, they gaslight it. They yes. gaslight it in a way that's damaging. And that's the that they're catering to. I, my point by bringing that up is they are catering to a real audience. Uh, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. There, there is a real demand for that type of commentary yes, because there are yes. so many younger guys coming yes. up who believe this craziness. Yes, bro. Um, and so they're 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 feeding that beast. Right. And so you know, in that regard, there's a market for them, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, but yeah. nevertheless, there's a market for them. I would posit that it's a market that does more harm than good when it comes to 
men's ability to understand how to successfully navigate women in modern relationships. But it is what it is, you know. What I'm, and, and and the last point that I'm gonna make mm. is uh, she was right when she talked about the quality of the women that they bring on that show. Yeah, she was absolutely correct. It's it's very easy to believe that you know it all when it is so rare for you to be challenged with substance from somebody who is on the other side of your talking points. She happens to be somebody who is effective enough at communicating that if she disagrees with what it is that you have to say, not only is she going to come to your front door to talk to you about it, but if, like you said, you're not prepared to respond, you're going to look like you don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. And you're going to look like you ought not to be listened to. Exactly. And, 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 I've, and I've watched those shows. I've watched a lot of their episodes. When Myron gets on there and he, and he spits that game and they don't have a comeback, it's because you're dealing with a sizable and real percentage of women who don't have the intelligent quotient. You know, they, they don't have enough intelligence, quite frankly. I know it might sound crass, but they're just quite frankly not smart enough <laughs> to be able to to be able to internalize what he's putting out there, sort of conceptualize it in an effective manner to create an informed response and then dish that response back out. It's more so of a you know, very much, uh, well, I'll do this and I'll do that and guys do this and guys do that. And so Myron hits them with the wisdom and then they say, oh man, you're brilliant. And then that's the end of the conversation. And Brittany Renner's like, well, you guys aren't as smart as you think you are and here's why. And, you know, after watching that, I kind of feel like she deserves anybody who comes to her defense um, in this particular podcast because, you know, the Fresh and Fit guys, I don't think that they came out looking i think they came out looking less authoritative than they did when they went in i agree and i would say that if a, if myron were able to get a girl like britney renner if he were able to <laughs> i don't know what that's <laughs> if he were able to get a girl like britney renner she would run circles around him he would get angry loud and whatever he doesn't have responses like that. And I agree with you. He, he'll he say some stuff where he's dropping jewels, but he's dropping jewels on girls who can't catch. Yeah. So, of course, they're <laughs> yeah, fumbling yeah, in yeah. there. Oh, 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 uh, and yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm dunking on these females. And it's like, yeah. yeah, bro, but look what kind of females you're inviting to the show. Yeah, they, they, they are not the sharpest tools in the shed, man. No, and that's not. consistent. What he <laughs> is... And the points that he's making when he brings those type of girls, because those girls are be they be revealing stuff, and they'll say some stuff that the common thought thinks, and it is informative and, and to a degree. But what kind of women are you chasing, a right? And if you are chasing those kind of just you know uh, whatever, like glorified sex toys, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. So if you're talking about those kind of women, who cares what they think? And no, they aren't special, honestly, because they are just looking for the come up and the whatever, whatever, whatever. But you're not, those aren't all women. Mm-hmm. And so when you're spewing that rhetoric to a young guy who's struggling to get women, because we talked about the the incelness. So mm-hmm. again, you got to speak to who their audience could be. Right, right. And so when you speak to the incelness and then these guys out here that are struggling, they're pre these guys are preaching victimhood. We yeah. always talk about victimhood. They're always talking about men are the victim to these yeah. women. Yeah. Women, yeah. women are doing this, women. So, like you said, bro, the, the red pill thing, and my I, I'll say that I agree with your definition of red pill. And my takeaway, I'll add on to that, is the or, or, origin of what red pill comes from is from the matrix. Mm-hmm. And so from you seeing past the veil. Mm-hmm. That was the part about the red pill community that I did find useful mm-hmm. because women, whether they want to admit it or not, they talk two different languages and they, they talk a conscious, so, you know, conscious thing, which yeah. sounds good. Right. And then they have a subconscious thing where they really be pulling everything from. Yeah. Yeah. You better be on her subconscious side. Yeah. She better. She better subconsciously be in love with you because if she just, if she consciously, if she consciously loves you or whatever, she's running. She doesn't really mess with you like that. She has to love you from a primal area in her brain. Where I can't, I don't know why I love this guy. He's yeah. just so man. 
And then so consciously, she's going to say a whole bunch of things to beta tire you, make you softer, make you weaker, make you have one eye, make you have all of these things where you're not really being the firm, masculine man you need to be. They're going to tell you those things. Yeah. So what the red pill community helped me for what, what they helped me with was helping me see past that veil of the stuff that they say overtly, but they don't really want this. Yeah. They want something else. Right. Yeah. So they, they mm-hmm. helped me see past the veil, that mm-hmm. type of stuff. When they're saying, help me see past the veil of what women are really doing and what a man really needs to do to be on this square all day long. Tell me that stuff. Yeah. Tell, tell an 18 year old kid that tell a 16, whoever's watching this stuff, tell them that stuff so they can be on this square. Yeah, I'm all in for that. But when as soon as you start getting into victimhood, women yeah. ain't doing nothing but this. They all yeah. do that. They do right. this, and they're, they're just basically just trashing them. Yeah, and this is like, so look, I get it that hey, they will do that, but they are what they are, aren't they not? And honestly, but they're they're, they're they're doing it in response to a stimuli. That's the exactly. thing. Exactly. It, it, they're not just doing it because oh, it's just in my nature to do this. They're doing it in response to something. Thank you. And so to tie back into your point is that they'll, they're opportunists. Yes. And so if you allow it, they're going to fill that void for you and you're yes. not going to enjoy it. You should, you should, you, you should have filled that pothole, sir. Yes. Now she filled it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Now she filled that for you and you're yes. not enjoying that at yeah. all. So <laughs> if, you, if you had that hole in your game. So this is my, and I, I brought this up on the previous one, but to me, I say that everybody like, oh, women are the universe. Women, are, and I think women are a reflection of the universe. I genuinely do. So much so that men need to be on their purpose, and that's part of the red pill stuff too. But that stuff get lost in all this. Well, y'all ain't special stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so men need to be on their square, on their purpose, and still do, doing whatever their life path said they need to be doing. Whatever that is, bro, find it out. Then when you're on that and you're doing that, life rewards you yes. with money and all yes. this other stuff like that. Mm-hmm. On top of getting rewarded with that, you also get an influx of women. Yeah, They just can't help themselves. They're just like, this guy has things figured out. And then so once they, they ask you certain questions, you answer it in a way where you didn't get in, you didn't give anything so they can fill their own voice and, and make your life miserable. You don't give them a leg to stand on with any of that stuff because you're so on your square. Mm-hmm. Like if that's just what you're doing, then the vagina just comes around and then you get it. And then if it's gone, then it wet because the new vagina just came. In. Yeah, it does. And so you're just constantly in a flux of just getting vagina because you're just on your job doing what you need to do. Guys that get vagina whenever they want. Don't talk like him. Yeah. <laughs> you're not as angry as he is. <laughs> Guys that pay, guys that pay for it are that angry. Yeah. Guys that really can't get it for real are that angry. Guys that have OnlyFans subscriptions are that angry. Yeah, they're that angry. Yeah. And they're talking to a young generation of guys who are just who naturally struggle. There's a learning curve. When you mm-hmm. go to the league, it's not easy when you first go to the league. You you gotta figure it out. Yeah. Then once you hit your prime, hello. Then you're out here crushing it and averaging double doubles or doing whatever, you know, but it takes time. Once you first get in the lead, things are flying around. Women mature faster than men. Well, I mean, so many, so many of these guys are trying to skip steps and they're developing social. Like I use the, you know, one of my many expressions is social atrophy. Mm -hmm. There are so many, there's so many of these guys nowadays who are growing up and they're not understanding. You have to develop social skills. It's, I don't know what happened. Somewhere along the way in recent history, social skills became an antiquated notion. Mm-hmm. Like it's like learn how to learn how to DM, learn how to make yeah. videos, learn how to TikTok, learn how to make crazy stuff on social media so that you can get likes and comments. But we stopped talking about how do you develop social skills, and that's a real tangible skill and to yes. have. Like yes. look at sports. Sports is an easy thing to analogize when trying to understand this stuff. Half the reason why some of these coaches don't make it at the professional level is because they're shitty communicators. Yeah, like exactly. communication is a skill. It's one thing to be able to know the X and O's. It's another thing to be able to communicate something effectively to somebody in such a way that they believe that they should listen to your direction. Right. When you don't have those basic fundamental skills as a human being, 
you're going to struggle in a lot of areas in life. Yes. And, and so when you're at a young age, when you're supposed to be developing those skills and you're not developing those skills because you're developing instant gratification skills where you don't even seek, like when you're doing stuff for the social, when you're doing stuff for the gram and all of this, mm -hmm. you're not actually going to receive a genuine response from another human being. You're just getting a mechanical response to a stimuli. Oh, hit a like button. Oh, hit a hit an emoji button, whatever. That's not real communication. Mm -hmm. And so you're growing up developing these various forms of impersonal communication that you can't implement in person. And so this is what you have. And that's what causes this divide. And so these guys go out in real life and they try to meet women and they, for some reason, are trying to, it's like, what, what, why, why is what I'm doing not working? It's because you're in a real life situation in person. And when you're right. in a real life situation in person, the rules that apply for success in that context are the same rules that apply for success in that context 200 years ago. That ain't changed, but you've missed those building blocks. And, and there's this huge audience of those kind of guys who don't have those building blocks. And so they have this premium Pornhub uh, subscriptions and they, and they line these chicks pockets up on OnlyFans to the point where some of these women can make $10,000 a week on OnlyFans not doing anything. Well, it's not their fault. If you don't give them your money, they don't have a platform. So who's the villain, her or you? Right. And, and, and that audience is in such large droves that it's easy to create a platform where you're saying, hey, man, you're a victim. Hey, and the, bro, you're and the not same, doing anything wrong. That's the irony. The same guys that are upset are the guys paying for the subscriptions. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's so wild. It doesn't like, make sense. Yeah. It, and it so doesn't. you're literally funding your own oppression. Yes. It's you're insanity. Doing, you're it's literally insanity. doing it. It's, it's, it's literal insanity. It, it, that's all it is. It's, it's yeah, actual it's, insanity. And that, and I agree with everything you're saying. And that's that's my that's my takeaway from this stuff is that I feel as though those guys got mainstreamed out, but like you said, they got mainstreamed out from their or I won't say their entire audience because that would be a gross generalization, but I would just say a large percentage of them I feel, especially the stands, are the ones that come from a place where man, like my frustration, I wasn't this frustrated, but if I did have frustrations as a kid growing up, just trying to figure it out, man. Like, what do I say? What do I do? Like, right. I didn't know what was going on. And I'm just trying yeah. to figure things out. And, but trial and error getting, I mean, girls just absolutely windmilling on me. I, you just had to say no. You didn't have to. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. said you look nice today. You didn't have to talk to me. Like, like I get where the frustration is coming from. Mm -hmm. And so... But if I just stop there and then listen to guys who are just frustrated, I wouldn't be the guy that I am right now. Yeah. The guy that I am right now went through the fire and he had to learn through trial and error and experience that, oh, this is how you communicate to women. And if you communicate like this, you get results you want mm -hmm. versus communicating like that and then getting dunked on all the time or being treated as a victim. And not all they want is to do this and they did it. Hey, look, I get it. So it's all coming from a sound place. I just feel as though these guys, like you said, uh, about at least the people who have co-opted, you didn't use that about them, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying they basically guys with their own logic, using red pill, man and spirit yeah. type of talking points right. to put their own spin and rhetoric in the game. And it's not true. It's yeah. really not true like that. So for people that, that do give manosphere advice or stuff like that, that, that I'm not against all of it because it has its purpose. And if dudes have, because there's guys that, that are talking about the game, they'll say some wild stuff here or there, but more or less, they're just talking about the game and how to be on your purpose and how to be on your score. I don't have a problem with none of that content. Those guys aren't always in the media every week anyway. It's mm -hmm. these guys. Now, mm -hmm. why is it these guys? Because they're the ones that, 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 that made it on the rap scene, basically, but they're really not about their life. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't think they are, especially once those DMs got exposed of how they're using their name to get the cat. Which didn't it's surprise, like, which did not surprise me at all. No, at it, all. It did, not not me all. either, honestly. Yeah. It, uh, a little bit. But no, really. I, I was I was not shocked one bit. There's no way, like, I don't care, man. Like, I can, 
I can I can spot that kind of behavior. <laughs> two faceness a mile away. It's like, so you mean to tell me you bringing around all of these Instagram models and OnlyFans models true, and talking all of this and talking all of this jive? You ain't finna try to slide. Of course you are. like. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, you're yeah. not. We don't believe you. You need more people. Yeah, like, it's it's just. I, I I wasn't shocked by that. That's why I was just like, okay, yeah, that's that's par for the course. But I the would have had more respect for them if they would have at least throughout over the course of time on their show talked about how they try to use their status in that show to get girls like just be on like and, and and so she said even like you know being honest about who you are like yeah bro like i don't agree with well i it's not that I, it's not about disagreeing or agreeing with that it's about the fact that it looks like you're double talking yourself yeah that's what i'm um, saying you know, you know and, and it's just like look man if i got a pot look you guys talk all the time about all of this kind of stuff and modern women this and modern women that. Okay, clearly you're not above dealing with the same women whom you criticize, which that's life. It is what it is. But you talk on your show as if you are and you right. preach that to these guys. And so the thing is, just keep a G like we don't have to live. We don't we don't have to be high and mighty and be and I don't have to be high and mighty and say, that's why I had to catch myself on a couple of those videos that we did in the past where I was almost saying, like, I'd never deal with an OnlyFans girl or an Instagram model. That's not true. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to be ruled by that decision to the point where I'm being, to use the notion, victimized by the dynamic. And that's mm -hmm. the difference. Mm -hmm. Like, these guys aren't teaching guys how to live within that but not be victimized by it, but to actually control the situation. They're just all together saying, hey, man, these chicks are dunking on you and there's nothing that you can do because they got all they they own all of the basketballs and all of the apparel and all of the equipment and all of the gyms and all of the rims so they're playing a game that you just can't play but mm -hmm. you're being forced to participate on the court anyway and that's mm -hmm. why they keep losing one game after the next and it's not really like that exactly exactly no i agree and that's the part about all of this stuff that i just feel is a little uh misleading it's is and it sucks that this happens but whenever there's a good thing or a good concept that gets introduced there will be people who see the value in it and put their own twisted spin on it and unfortunately there's going to be a large group of people who buy that for whatever reason and i re well i know the reasons that they buy it is because they're literally coming from the same basically the same energy signatures yes, yes. where they where they were still where they coming from the same type of struggles yes and it's just and when he talks that frustratedly about women it sounds as though he hates women and a guy who's telling me how to get women when he also sounds like he hates women is not a man I want to take advice from. <laughs> yeah. Period. Yeah. And he sounds as though he hates women. Me, man, I love me some women. <laughs> I'm not delusional like him. Yeah. To where he has to say that. And that's why she caught that. That's why I heard saying the stuff. You saying women ain't so special, but your whole show is about getting the cat. Yeah. So yeah. how are we not special? Right. So you using the wrong language or you going about it the wrong way. Right. So you're not even you're not even sure and strong on your own, you know, uh what's the uh convictions. Yeah. You yeah. you're just around here just double talking to saying whatever sounds good. Yeah. And so you're saying whatever sounds good, bro. You're not really living that life. You can't pull a woman like her. That's why you can't talk to her like that. That's you you nervous on that stage. You used to be in front of mics and hot stuff. Now you got somebody that can talk and defend herself. You don't know what to say. That's he. They made uh, honestly the the, the dark skinned dude. Uh, he never really say nothing anyway. I'm talking about the light skinned one. Yeah, yeah. He's the one who do all the talking. Yeah. The biggest mouth. The he other guy. The most. He the one that spit all the game. Yeah. Yeah. He the one. That's like, oh, he got everything to say. Yeah. He got everything figured out. And so I've heard those guys at the basketball court. I would hear those guys talk, and it's like, bro, what? Ever. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> those are those those are those those are the LeBron fans who say LeBron is the best player ever because he always gets 28, 8, and 8. Yes. And they yeah, scream yeah. that and they regurgitate that over and over again. It just regurgitates. He makes his teammates better. Yeah. Those guys. He makes his teammates better. What, what, what year were you born? 99? <laughs> 
because your reference of basketball is slim. It's, if, yeah. if that's what your statement is, it's what you it's, it's Sports Center. That's your reference to basketball. Is what you hear on Sports Center. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, bro, and that and that's the part that's dangerous. That's the part that's dangerous is that these guys have. And I'm not hating on their platform. It's just that their platform is so large, and and then they just. They, it's just new brains, I'm sure. That that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And then, the, yeah. And then, because, yeah. hey, man, I used to watch or listen to all kinds of radio shows back in the, you know, 2005, 2006. And I don't think like that anymore. Yeah. And I had to really, I learned some stuff from it, but I had to really realize that, wow, the world's more than this. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's more than that. It's more than that. And the world's not going to end next year. You know, hell, that's been. 16, 17 years, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Had they had them passed and the world's still here. Mm-hmm. So apparently those people that are saying the sky was falling, you know, 16 years ago when I was listening, they were mm-hmm. wrong. Mm-hmm. And then I had to recondition myself, take the parts about what they said that was actually sticking and making some sense, and then just drop the rest of this propaganda that mm-hmm. they're trying to spew to me because these people aren't, they don't have everything everything figured out. Yeah. So if, they, if, if people watch Fresh and Fit and taking what they're saying from a grain of salt or watching it for its entertainment value because they just love listening to dumb thoughts talk because honestly, that is interesting at times yeah. because it's it's crazy how identical some of those mega thoughts sound to the yeah. average everyday girl. Yeah. So sometimes <laughs> it is interesting for that angle. I get that. And it is. So I'm not hating on every viewer or nothing like that. I'm talking about the the potential harm Mm-hmm. that their content could cause from a young guy who hasn't had the world, hasn't seen the world really, but are listening to guys that they think have seen it. Yeah. And if you've seen those DMs where they're talking to those girls, they have not. They ain't seen it, yeah. yeah. They have not. If, 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 if you can get a Britney Ritter on your own merit, you're not in DMs. I'm sorry. Like, I firmly believe that. Um, listen, a lot of this stuff might change, but a lot of it stays the same. When it comes to men and women, Women rec- women respect what is worth being respected. Intrinsically, innately, they know it when they see it. They know it when they encounter it. A guy who can get women like that on his own merit isn't living in his DMs all day. I, I'm, I'm sorry, he's just not. And I know we're, I know we're all on this. I know we're all on this DM kind of world now and all of this kind of stuff. But certain basic principles still apply. And like, I, there, there, there's just no guy who gets women like that who's just always in his phone DMing chicks leveraging a, a podcast in order to do so no less like that's a clear sign that that is that is a clear sign that his beha- that that guy well we're talking about him specifically so that's a clear sign that his behavior is counterintuitive to his rhetoric right. um is, is what right. that means right. so you just have to be cautious right you know in any capacity but especially in this particular case you got to be cautious who you choose to listen to Take it with a grain, man. Take it with a grain of salt, like, and just listen to it like that. But, uh, yeah, listen to it for its entertainment value. I'm not hating on you yeah, for that. It, it, it's, it's like we talked. It's like we talked about with the filter, right? Like, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I, I, you know, late '80s born, so I'm a hip hop kid and all of that kind of stuff. But I wasn't born in the trap. I wasn't. I didn't get it out the mud and all of this crazy stuff that these guys talk about in their music. But I still listen to the music, nevertheless. Why? Because I have a filter that's able to sort of extract right. the, 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 the things of value that do apply to me that I can use, but let all the rest of that stuff fall by the wayside. So mm-hmm. it's they're not going to tell me that I need to start robbing and stealing and shooting right, and right. all this kind of stuff. But what they will tell me that I need to do is, is focus on being successful and working hard and grinding. Right. That is what they can tell me how to do. And so it's all about the filter, like watching all of these shows. And that's what I had to learn personally, because and I and and, 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 and this is the main reason why I take I have taken a step back from from exposing myself to all of these content creators who talk this red pill stuff and talk about women. I, I had to dial it back. I used to listen. I used to watch a lot of those videos and listen to those. Pop- I had to stop because. It gets to a certain point where you will start to develop a work perception of what's yeah, actually yeah. happening. Yeah. And you'll start to believe that yes. you're being victimized by females. Yes. And that's not actually the way. And, and, and not only that, but you'll also start to you'll also start to believe 
that you need to start changing all of these various aspects of yourself. And that is the worst thing that any guy can do. When you start thinking that you need to talk this kind of way, dress this kind yes. of way, look this kind of way, rock this kind of haircut, when you start believing that kind of craziness from, 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 and, and, and you can develop it either from listening to your friends or from watching the, you know, content creators and all of this, all of these videos and all of this kind of stuff, that is when you become a lost soul. And so I had to learn, I need to dial it back from watching all of these videos because it's going to create a sense, it is going to create a an extreme sense of insecurity within me in which I'm constantly second guessing every move that I make and thinking that the things that I used to think weren't good, weren't good enough or just were outright not true. Mm -hmm. And so like, you just got to keep that stuff in mind, man. And like the real rules of, men and women and courtship and dating and relationships and all that kind of stuff. I don't care how many social media platforms exist. The old school rules will always apply because at the end of the day, we're still going to be human beings. Mm -hmm. A woman is going to not respect you and she's going to think that she can run all over you when she gets the sense that you are ruled by vagina. When she, when she perceives you to be a guy who is singularly motivated by the pursuit of women, she is going to proceed to run all over you. And you cannot, on the back end of that, blame her for the fallout from it. Exactly. That she was will on you. She will supply your demand yes. and then wrap her, her, her whole little web around your head. You're going to be out of there. Yeah. And then now you're frustrated again. Yes. Yeah. That's oh. on you, man. Like that. that is on you. So... You know, I, you know, there's this, I, I, I like, I always say like, okay, if you perceive something to be an issue, let's take it all the way back to the beginning and assess the progenitive behavior. Mm -hmm. So what was the original behavior that caused this thing to become as big as it is? And now you perceive this thing to be a problem. So if you think OnlyFans is a problem, what is the progenitive behavior of that? What is, what is the act the, the 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 decision, the behavior that caused OnlyFans to be the problem that it is. Was it the women first, or was it the very thing that allows for that to be such a lucrative opportunity for them? So if you think that it's a problem, stop spending your money. If you don't monetarily support it, there is no platform. Like if a chick has zero subscribers, she's not gonna make content because she ain't making money. There's exactly. no reason to. She has no incentive to do so. So exactly. if you think this is a problem, stop putting your money into it. Exactly. You know, and that's everywhere in life. Assess the progenitive behavior. What is the progenation of this issue? If you think that the Washington Redskins is a racist name, stop selling the games out. Stop mm -hmm. buying the jerseys, the tickets, the season tickets, the paraphernalia. Don't support the team. Don't support the program. Stop going. If you go, then you're capitulating to your own insanity. So if this is a problem, don't go. Don't spend your money. If you think that women being on OnlyFans is an issue, stop spending your money. Don't go on the website. Don't even have an account. If you think if, if you think the advent of Instagram models and fitness models is a problem, stop following their pages. Stop liking their photos. Stop commenting on their videos. But you can't contribute to the madness and then on the back end complain about the madness. You're creating an environment which allows the madness to exist. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, unfortunately, not enough red pill people talk about that. You know, they just kind of talk about how women are messing everything up. Mm -hmm. right? and, I, and, I, and, and so this isn't a Brittany Renner defense uh, situation for me. Um, and, de and definitely not from JB, right? So we're not def we're not defending Britney Renner. We're not saying that she's right and she did it. This is honestly, I look at this like locker room talk. Um, it's not what it's not what the other team did right. It's mm -hmm. what we did wrong. Yes. Yes. And so if once yes. and so for these guys, they did not hold their own when she because whether we like it or not, that was the that was a clashing of social media powers <laughs> and she was coming from the the uh amber rose tree of yeah. liberal thoughtisms and yeah. all this other weird stuff and then here she comes uh with her rhetoric yeah. which can be debunked 
dismantled and yes. disfigured, dismembered. If you like know what you're talking, if you know what you're talking about, yes. Yeah, you could just whoop, 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 whoop. And she's so open for conversation, it makes it perfect. That's why the Kevin Samuel situation where he would where we agree that he could have been a little bit more critical. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was still more of a, hey, I know what I'm talking about while yeah. I'm talking to you. So it was a much more it. it was much more constructive. It was a much more co constructive yeah. conversation. Yeah. And so versus this guy just laughing stuff. Oh, she's triggered. <laughs> I was like, bro, give her some sauce. Like, let her know what's up. Yeah. But he, he, you know, so like my whole thing is, so this isn't a Britney Renner defense thing. This isn't that women have things figured out thing. This isn't that women don't do nothing wrong thing. This is not that. What I'm saying is from for locker room talk for the men that are listening and watching, you know what I'm saying? This is like, hey, we, we, we're just laying out. At least I can speak for myself. Laying out the missed opportunity of of them set setting that energy straight. This energy that Brittany Renner is representing is out of control, in my opinion. <laughs> it is out of control. It is growing wings. It already had feet and running. All right, this is a, this is like a flying roach in the house. Yeah, it is, I'm, not call, I'm not calling women roaches. I'm just saying the energy is like yeah. the flying, it's like you see the roach and you go, oh shit, it's a roach. But once it starts flying off the wall, it's, it's a whole like, other oh, ball game. It's a whole. It's like he's flying now. It just changes everything. They're growing wings with this stuff, and it's get it's going to a whole new level. So we need we need our guys, our captain, the people that the street shows these guys. <laughs> So we need to put that energy in its place. And I feel as though they, they missed a golden yeah. opportunity. Yeah. And the reason why I missed the they reached they missed the golden opportunity is for all the reasons that we've been saying over here. And I think it's because they're just false flagging. Yeah. And they're not really about that life. They can talk all the bullet points, but that's it. And so once because you have to live the lifestyle in order, it's like when somebody's asking you a question about your life and your history or something. Somebody can ask you the same question 100 different times. You're going to come up with 100 different answers mm -hmm. that's given the same answer mm -hmm. because that was your life story. Mm -hmm. So if you're pulling from the same database when these girls are talking to you, you're giving them fact after fact after fact after fact. What you got to say about that? <sighs> huh? Yeah. What you said about this? Huh? Here's another one. Yeah. But when when he ain't got nothing to pull from, but more rhetoric, mm -hmm. you give her rhetoric, bro. She's yeah. getting right at you. Give her something. Yeah. No, nah, all I got is rhetoric. More more <laughs> bullet points. What? Am I listening to your show, or is somebody getting at you and you have to defend yourself on the stand? Mm -hmm. And he did not defend himself. Boy, you're looking guilty. And if this, if, if, if I'm sitting here as a as in a, as a judge in a jury, and I'm here uh, 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 judging my peer, and she's the lawyer, and she grilled him like that, and he laughed it off and said, "Sir, you better answer those questions," because <laughs> now I think you're lying. <laughs> you're not about this, are you? She's calling you out, basically. And you had nothing. So yeah. my whole thing was, it's not about how she did this, she did that. No, she did what women with her energy set will do. And you said you got all the big guns for all those types of women. Here they come, and where mm -hmm. you at? Mm -hmm. So yeah. my whole thing is, so look at your captains, look at your, your, look at the people that you're following, and see how they really are when they get confronted with the energy that they say they're so big and bad about. Mm -hmm. I used to I used to listen to all kinds of music where people were so big and bad. Oh, they're so big and bad. And then when some real stuff happened, those guys are nowhere yeah. to be found. Mm -hmm. Nowhere. So I was like, oh, so you guys are just talking on the track too. You know, you're just the conscious guy talking yeah. on the track. You you're 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 no different than the trapper guy. Because mm -hmm. you're not really about this conscious life either. You're just selling me a song. Yeah. Yeah. And so the same thing for these guys. You're just selling your you're just selling a pro. Hey. More power to you. Yeah, it's, all, it's, it's all it's all entertainment, man. Entertainment. Yeah. It's entertainment. It's entertainment. So so grain of salt, it guys. I watched entertainment with grains of salt. I take mm -hmm. everything in with grains of salt. Yeah. And if it doesn't stick, it don't stick. And everybody yeah. got their own rhythm and stuff like that. But I tell you like this, and I'll be done with this. But look at I'm passionate talking about this guy. But this guy is angry when he's talking about women. It's the difference between being passionate about whatever you're talking about and being upset. Mm -hmm. This dude gets upset when he's talking about women. You know why? Because I because 
even when the whole stuff came out right before people was doing stuff like that. So the guy was in fraternities and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure he was getting fraternity vagina. He's not He's not a guy that didn't get vagina. I'm not saying he didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm saying he's the guy that falsely uses his status in order to get it. He never was a guy who can off game get it. He had to get status, status, status. That's why he used his show to get it. Mm-hmm. If I had a show as big as his, I would get vagina off of my show too. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't be thirsty in a DM saying, you yeah, can't exactly. even come on if exactly. you don't get me new. You're exactly. extorting the girls? Exactly. That's what the difference. Is that? That's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you want to take advice from a guy that can't get it off the muscle? He can't get it off the He can't even get it off with steroids with his show. So get out of here. Uh, yeah. That's my whole thing. So yeah. take, 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 take what you want. This turned into a fresh and fit bash session. <laughs> <laughs> a bad session. It didn't mean to, but my whole thing was, hey, apparently it was on my chest, and I had no. It it's just, but, 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 but these were all accurate. These were all reasonable assertions reasonable. that we made on this segment. I don't think there was anything out of bounds there. It's just, <laughs> you know, and, and the thing about it is, like, and, and we do it. We we do it with the music stars too. Like, stop thinking that they have everything figured out because they go platinum. Like right, stop right. thinking that stop thinking that pro athletes right. have it all figured out because they can get women. Like, okay, rather stop thinking that pro athletes have tremendous social skills just because they get women. They're getting women because they are NBA superstars, not because they have tremendous social skills. Exactly. Stop believing that these individuals have everything figured out just because they have a platform accorded to them. Uh, they were just in the right place at the right time and took advantage of an opportunity. But j- there are holes in his game. Just like there are holes in everyone's game. No one is infallible and no one is perfect. The danger inherent in it is making it seem as though you have all the answers. Um, and that's where it gets a little dicey. Um, but, you know, it, it is it is what it is. Um, I agree. I think there is a difference between saying I am a, I am popular on this show, therefore I get vagina, and saying I get vagina because I put chicks on my show. <laughs> Those are two different things. And so one is okay and one is a little suspect. Exactly. And you can guess which one is the suspect one and, and the one that's acceptable. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I I you know, I, I I hear I'm not, you know, this wasn't necessarily in defense of Britney Renner, but it was uh Britney Renner came out of that situation looking more unscathed than they did. Yeah, exactly. Um, in my I would opinion. Agree. I would agree um, with that. You know, and it, it it is what it is. So, um, you know, don't make Britney Renner look good. That's a lot. <laughs> he already so aesthetically fine, but don't make her philosophy. Philo- look it's good. the philosophy, yeah, yeah. It, that that, that provided that provided an opportunity for a justification of the philosophy. Yeah, exactly. It did, and and you know, it it, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Like you said, be on, like at this point. You you said that the philosophy is starting to grow wings. I felt like it already had. <laughs> I felt like I felt like the roach was already in the crib. Quiet. We just couldn't kill it. It was like the roach. It was like the roach from Men in Black, the first one, the giant one <laughs> that they had to get a laser gun to kill. Because I already felt like uh, I already felt like he was, it was it, that the roach was in the house flying around. I was just a guy saying I don't care about the roach flying in here. It is yeah. what it is. Like yeah. I'm still gonna be able to maneuver throughout and you know these streets and get what I need to get. Uh, as someone who's on my square and has the appropriate understanding of what being red pill actually is. Um, but you know that that'll do it for tonight's live stream, man. These are two great topics. I had a lot of fun tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, another one in the books, man. Be sure to check out the full content library on consciousapproach.com. Check out the Conscious Approach Instagram page at Con Approach, C-O-X-C-O-N-A-P-P-R-O-A-C-H. Uh, also check out the Conscious Approach Facebook page, spelled Conscious Approach Normal Spelling. Look for the blue brain. Uh, wherever you see this video, if you're on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe so you can get the notifications. Comment on in the comment section. Uh, we always appreciate you know hearing what folks like to say about the commentary. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit the share button, hit the like button. Also like the page if you have not done that. I certainly appreciate all the support. Continue to support logical content. You can find me on Instagram at JVWiz, J-V-W-I-N-S. 
I'm also on Facebook at Javis Sargent, J A V I S O G D E N. And uh, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, otherwise, continue to support logical content. We'll see you on the next video. Yep, yep. And the name is Dogon SS. You can find me on Instagram at Dogon underscore SS and on YouTube at Dogon SS. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe over there. Um, yeah, and um, as, Jay, as Jay says, um, you know, support the logical content. Um, and like how we were saying this entire time, honestly, I felt like both uh, topics, low key, um, had a thing, had a message. Basically, is um, ignorance, man. Ignorance is not bliss. <laughs> if you if you follow if you follow philosophies. If you follow philosophies just all the way through, you could, you know, there's no one philosophy out here that's making it. It's not. So there's um, there's a lot of good things out there and a lot of good advice and a lot of good philosophies. So if you're taking a bit from this, a bit from that or what have you, um, then at that point, you will have a little bit more controlling in your own personal life instead of living somebody else's fantasy, somebody else's reality. And you can live your own personal reality with some um, heads up or some, you know, uh, information from other people's life experience. So if you if you take other people's life experience or whatever, and then you take the grains of salt from that, apply it to yours so you can live a succinct, normal type of life, then by all means, go for it. But just going hard body on one philosophy and going, oh yeah, these guys know the thing. Yeah, even for us. So some of the stuff that I say, yeah, man, it's cool or whatever. But take what I say with a grain of salt. I know you don't agree with everything I say, right. but just take yeah. stuff with You're a grain of salt. To. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the point is to be is not for people. Like I, I, I prefer for people to challenge me on stuff. Like right. I'm not running a cult. Right. Like, this is not a cult. Like, mm -hmm. that's weird. I'm not on that weird. Look, if there's anything that you anyone needs to know about me, I'm not on weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not running a cult. This is not a you must agree with me. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you. Let those mm -hmm. other people over there do that crazy foolishness. Right, right. Uh, you're not supposed to agree with everything I say. You're supposed to take what I say with a grain of salt and apply your own individual experiences. But the point is, apply your own individual experiences. That's the exactly. point. And we exactly. all are different in that respect. But as long as you exactly. you need to be doing that instead of saying, I need to just do this because I saw this person do that, do that because this person did this, think this way because this person thought this way. You have no identity at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Agree. yeah. So and that's 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 pretty much it, everybody. And um, I've always said no reasonable person thinks on the same side of every issue. Reasonable people take the information that they get and make a reasonable conclusion. They don't say, oh, I must think like this because I'm conservative. So let me just think like this, even though we're talking about money or, oh, I'm liberal. So I must think this way about this topic, even though we're talking about flying kites in a park. Like only crazy people do that. Reasonable, reasonable people are somewhere in the middle. They don't just fall on one side and do this one thing consistently straight through because it's ideologically aligned on one side. Um, but that'll be it for the close out in this video, man. Um, we appreciate everybody for tuning in, uh, whether you tune in live or post talk, certainly appreciate it. Continue to support logical content. January 22nd, constant approach live streams in the books. We'll see y'all next week. Peace out.